So Bobby Althoff is a 26-year-old content creator who is rapidly gaining prominence as one of the most influential and controversial podcasters out there. Initially, she was recognized as a mom influencer on TikTok and she gained over 1.2 million followers, but within the span of less than a year, she's been able to transition from being a mom content creator to a full-time podcaster and a very successful one at that. Her podcast called The Really Good Podcast has garnered millions, like tens of millions of views on TikTok and YouTube and she literally started this year, 2023. And since the podcast has launched, she has secured high profile interviews with celebrities like Lil Yachty, Shaquille O'Neal, and even Drake. And these are all very influential figures in the entertainment industry. So the fact that she was able to get these guests on her podcast without having a long history of being a podcaster is insane and has made a lot of people question where she came up and if she's actually authentic or if she's an industry plant. But the main reason why I want to talk about Bobby is because there seems to be a common occurrence of the type of guests that she is interviewing and her podcast seems to be taking a certain route. And I wonder if all of these guests are there just by coincidence or there is a reason why all of these guests have one thing or a couple things in common. But that's something that we're going to discuss today in this video so keep on watching so we can learn about Miss Bobby and see if she's an industry plant or not and just discuss her podcast in general so let's get into it. Okay, but first let's establish who Bobby is and I'll give you some backstory on who she is. So Bobby started off as a TikTok influencer and she grew to prominence by posting videos about her pregnancy and posting about her children and her personal life. She's actually a mom of two little girls. She nicknames them Concrete and Richard, but she has not released their real names due to respecting their privacy, so we're not going to get into that. But she is married to Corey Athoff, and people claim that he is like a millionaire because he's like the senior executive president of Compt TI, I believe. But honestly, that's all I really know about him. He's not really that interesting, so we're not going to talk about him that much. But anyways, back to her previous content. If you watch her previous content, you can see that she's always had this like dry humor in her content. So I heard you do Khloe Kardashian's hair? Yeah. Do you have any of her hair here? Like right now? Mm, no, we're not doing that. Do are you sure you don't? We're that, not doing that. looks that. like it's her hair color. Um, no, we're definitely not doing that. Just one piece? No. Just one, you can just glue it in? No. Okay. No. Okay. So this type of interviewing style which she uses with these celebrities did not come out of thin air. It's always been within her, I guess, if that's the right word to say. And essentially what she is doing is dry humor. And dry humor is essentially a form of comedic delivery in which something humorous is said or done by a person while not exhibiting a change in emotion or facial expression. So I would say Bobby is fairly good at dry humor. However, keep in mind that I'm not a huge fan of dry humor because I don't find it funny. But I will say I did find her Drake interview entertaining. Honestly, I think it's only because I like Drake, so that's the only reason why I ended up watching the full video. But that's besides the point. She has shifted all of her focus and attention to her podcast. And now on YouTube with her podcast account, she has almost a million subscribers and she achieved this within less than a year. So clearly there's an audience for this. People are intrigued and she is doing well. Okay, but let's get more into depth on how she started her podcast and how she was able to become one of the top podcasters of this year and to be co-signed by figures like Drake and Little Yachty and Shaquille O'Neal. So, Let's get into it. Okay, so as I've stated before, Miss Bobby has been able to accomplish a lot with her podcast in the span of less than a year. And her TikTok page for her podcast now has 6.4 million views at the time that I'm filming this video. So it has been doing very well and it has surpassed her previous account. And on this page, she posts snippets of her interviews and also sneak peeks of upcoming interviews. On this page, she gets millions of views like a lot of views. And her very first guest on her podcast was actually Colleen Ballinger, um, also known as Miranda Sings. But since Colleen Ballinger, she has been able to secure so many high profile guests on her show like Tyga, Offset, Little Yachty, Mark Cuban, I think recently Charlie Puth. And it's actually through her Drake podcast that's where I found out about her. And I'm sure that's where a lot of people found out about her too. And that's how she basically blew up. But let's backtrack a bit. So she interviewed Funny Marco. He's a comedian and YouTuber. And this interview did really, really well. She posted a lot of snippets of the interview on TikTok. And all of those videos combined gained over 70 million views. And it pretty much went viral. You're not my type. What's your type? Uh, people that... Like, my type is just brothers, a lot of brothers, a lot of wild, ghetto shit, just booty. 
just somebody just patting their head all day and just saying, where's my baby daddy? Where's my baby daddy? Oh, you got me fucked up. I'm about to bust all your windows out. You got it all twisted in this motherfucker. Go get my motherfucking gun before I beat you and I cheat on her. And then she just like, I don't know the fuck you didn't cheat on me. And she beat me up. And then I'll be in jail and I get out and I'll be like, yo, like, why you call the police on me? And she's just like, because you ain't sh my And then that's when I'm just like, yo, 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 lady, chill out. I love you. And we start kissing. Then she be like, now go in there and take care of your stepson because he ain't really your son, mother And I'm like, whoa, sh I like that. I don't think you got that in you. At all. You got spooky hearing it out, you know? And that's just real life where I come from. A straight gutter, just out the wall, blown. Everything is just just like a waterfall. Just keep dropping. And you don't even know who Tupac is. Wow. And this is how Drake supposedly found out about Bobby because he saw the video of Bunny Marco, he liked it, and then he ended up following her on Instagram. And when Drake followed her on Instagram, that's when she got the courage to DM him and be like, hey, do you want to be on my podcast? And then that is how he got on her podcast. But I am going to touch on the Drake interview later in this video because that whole situation is very sus to me. After her interview with Drake, her podcast literally skyrocketed and she became super, super popular. Because having an artist as big as Drake co-sign you is literally life-changing and that basically gave her a career. And since Drake is such a big artist, the fact that he co-signed her without her having the proper skills or the experience in podcasting is sus. And a lot of people, rightfully so, were suspicious of how she was able to get Drake on her show and not only did she just interview drake the setting to me was kind of weird and also i think the setting is what made the video do even better i mean the video was going to do well regardless because it's drake in the video but they were on a bed and i was like huh like obviously they were far apart and everything but it's just kind of weird like the location was weird i feel like a bed is not like the place you do a podcast on i mean if it's like a girl talk type of a vibe and aesthetic that makes sense i don't know i i think that was part of like the skit and everything so maybe i'm just over analyzing it maybe they knew that if they did the interview on the bed a lot of more people will be talking about it and i'm talking about it so it's working and also the fact that the interview took place on a bed I think that's also a major reason why there's a rumor going around that Bobby and Drake hooked up. I mean, there's no evidence to back it up, so honestly, I don't believe it. But Bobby actually said this regarding the location of her interview with Drake. So the idea behind it was that I wanted to do the interview so bad that I bothered him while he was going to bed to do it. So now we do all of my podcasts in random locations. Honestly, like that's her explanation, sus. <laughs> As I kept researching on Bobby, I wasn't really believing everything that she was saying because everything just was not making sense to me. But either way, the concept worked, people liked the interview. It was a really good interview, so that's all that matters, I guess. Anyways, her most recent guest is Shaquille O'Neal, and that interview was able to exceed over a million views in five days. So that's another big feat for Bobby. And I actually started watching the interview because I wanted to incorporate some clips from the interview into this video, but honestly, I found it boring. I won't lie. I think after 19 minutes, I was like, okay, like, nah. But the fact that she's able to get all of these stamps of approvals from all of these Hollywood men is making me give the side eye. So let's actually talk about that right now. So as I've stated multiple times throughout this video, she started her podcast in 2023. So this year, she has not even had this podcast for a full year, yet she has been able to achieve so much success. And this type of success does not come overnight. It takes years to achieve. For example, Joe Budden, he's a very, very popular podcaster now, but I believe he started his podcast in 2015. And since 2015, he has been able to build a solid fan base and have a lot of success with his podcast but it didn't happen in less than a year and the thing is that joe budden's podcast literally focuses on hip-hop pop culture so uh business sports and all that so the guests that bobby has on her podcast make more sense to be on his podcast because that's the things that he knows about he talks about he can ask them actual questions on those type of topics but bobby doesn't even know anything about hip-hop yet a lot of her guests are hip-hop artists got the plastic i've been acting brand new Mm. Rip me out the plastic. I've been acting brand new. You know what that is? 
Ist das Nicki Minaj? That's Mulatto. Who's Mulatto? Who's Mulatto? And sometimes I feel like she must be pretending that she doesn't know anything. I don't know if she's just doing it to be a character or she genuinely doesn't know, but it's not cute. But I just feel that a lot of her guests are influential figures in black culture and in the hip hop industry. So it would make more sense for them to be going on the Joe Budden podcast, for example. However, obviously they can choose whatever interview they want to do and going on different kinds of interviews and talk shows is actually better because then they can expand their reach to new audiences. However, Bob Bobby barely even had an audience like these celebrities going on her podcast gave her the audience I'm sure that everyone who watches her videos watches because of the artist they didn't watch because they're already fans of Bobby so when Bobby was interviewing Drake and Lil Yachty she was not introducing them to a new audience they were introducing her to a new audience and there's no problem with helping her out however what exactly has she done to deserve that help and I'm not even trying to sound harsh or aggressive but generally, because she hasn't had this podcast for a long time, she hasn't really shown any significant interest in hip hop culture or the black culture. So why is everyone so quick to give her the stamp of approval? But another point that I would like to mention is that I think there is a benefit to having these two worlds emerge, like the hip hop culture emerge with Bobby's type of aesthetic, like having those two worlds merge is profitable if we're being honest because look at Bobby's podcast. So I can see that appeal because I was watching a couple of her podcasts. However, a lot of people have expressed that a lot of young black creators would really benefit from the opportunities that Bobby's receiving because they know the culture better. They're more immersed in the culture. And the biggest argument is that Bobby has been able to attain all of these opportunities by doing the bare minimum. And there was a clip of Bobby at a Drake concert. I'm assuming he gave her the ticket. She was in a really good section. And basically like, you know, he was getting hype. He was like, you know, doing his thing. And the video was of her and I guess her two friends. Her two friends were dancing, but she was just like standing there awkward, not really vibing. And a lot of people were mad about that because they're like, if a young content creator was there, they would have appreciated the fact that they were able to see Drake live. And a lot of people were calling her ungrateful for that opportunity. However, I do disagree. I do think that she is grateful for all the opportunities that she's getting. However, her character is to be like awkward and like to show no emotion and just to be shy. So whenever there's a camera on her, she's gonna be in that persona because if it gets posted online, she has to upkeep her, her image. However, I would also like to point out that even though she tries to act clueless and awkward, she knows exactly what she's doing. I do believe that she knows that interviewing a certain type of guest will get more views and get more publicity, even if she tries to act clueless. So let's just compare the views of her interviews. So the Drake interview has been taken down from YouTube, but I'm sure it would have had the most amount of views. But let's just compare her views. Okay, so she just posted her Shaquille O'Neal interview. That one was nine days ago and it has 1.1 million views. Then she interviewed J Balvin, that one got 700k. But her interview with Tyga also got 5 million. Her interview with Lil Yachty got 6 million. Her interview with Bunny Marco has 4 million. So it's interesting to see that the black male hip hop artists are the ones that are giving her the most amount of views on her podcast. So a lot of factors have influenced her success with her podcast. And I think the biggest one is the fact that she's an industry plant, but let's explore that more. Okay, before we investigate whether she's an industry plant or not, let's actually define what an industry plant is. So in the entertainment industry, an industry plant is a term that can be applied to individuals or entities who appear to have achieved success or prominence through means other than organic talent, merit, or hard work. It suggests that they have been strategically positioned or promoted by industry ins insiders such as talent agencies, managers, publicists, or studios to create the illusion of a natural talent or grassroots popularity. So there are many signs that someone could be an industry plant and one of them is having a sudden rise to success. So industry plants tend to come out of nowhere and they quickly rise to the top and they don't really seem to have any of the usual struggles that emerging artists or creators have to go through. Another sign is when they have high level connections. Having strong connections with people who are inside the music or entertainment industry allows you to have a career advancement because you already have a stamp of approval from these entertainers who have solid fan bases already. 
Also, having extensive promotion and marketing is another big factor that someone is an industry plant. Industry plants often benefit from a lot of media marketing campaigns, a lot of media coverage and promotional efforts to boost their visibility. And Bobby has been all over TikTok. We could say it's the algorithm, but even the algorithm is very sus. So those are all the signs of an industry plant. So just keep that in mind as we go through this part in the video. First, I want to talk about how the Drake interview happened because it's very sus and the explanations do not make sense. So as I said before, Bobby said that Drake followed her on Instagram, then she DM'd him, and then he accepted the interview. And that's just how it happened, which I do not believe. Like, how is that possible? I know if I DM Drake right now, he would not reply. In fact, let's even try. Let's test this theory. I'll DM Drake, and if he replies, I'll let you guys know. I'm right there, Champagne Poppy, message. I'll be like, hey, do you want to come on my YouTube channel? Yeah, so let's see if he replies, guys. Nothing in the entertainment industry happens by accident or happens by luck. Sure, that's very possible, but everything is strategically planned out. So there's definitely more to the story on how she was able to achieve her interview with Drake. There's no way she just DM'd him and then the interview came to life. And if there's more to the story, that's not a bad thing, but it's the fact that she's pushing this narrative that it was a very like just innocent gesture, just happened out of pure luck and it was very authentic because we know it's not. Because Drake is a very busy man. He has things to do, he has businesses to run, he has meetings to attend, shows to do. So for him to allot an hour of his time to this random girl who just started interviewing people like two seconds ago doesn't make any sense. And it's not just Drake too, it's all these other celebrities too, they have lives they have things to do so they're very busy so for them to a lot like an hour two hours of their time to sit down and do this interview means that there's a lot of things happening behind the scenes so it's very suspicious that she's able to secure all of these interviews with them and she doesn't say that she she works alone but she kind of does give up that illusion and kind of pushes that narrative that it's very small like team or it's just her doing everything she doesn't have a huge team backing her and I don't like that she's kind of pushing that narrative when she's literally the complete opposite also, I want to point this out because no one has been really talking about it. So during her interview with the billionaire Mark Cuban, he stated that he knew Bobby's agent and that she was one of the best. But okay, go ahead. Okay. Uh, my podcast. Okay. I haven't. I'm just in debt right has now. Has too much debt. It does. Has too much debt. Yeah. Okay. You don't think it's a good idea? I think the podcast you're doing is a great idea. It's been great, but it's got too much debt. You don't think there's any money to be made off of it? Um, well, you got a great agent and you got a great agency and you mm -hmm. got great guests and so, yeah, there's probably some money. That's not fair. I manifested this podcast and it worked. Well, we also have a great agent that I'm friends with. No, that's not. He didn't help. He helped with your episode. He hasn't helped with anything else. Oh. So if Bobby was able to secure a really prominent agent in the entertainment industry to the fact that even Mark Cuban knows her personally, that says a lot. Because why would an agent that knows Mark Cuban take on this podcast girl that has like five episodes out only? And this just doesn't really make sense to me because Bobby is going against the fact that she's an industry plant. But during an interview, Bobby denied these accusations that she's an industry plant. And she said that she posted a TikTok where she stated that she would pay anyone $300 to connect her to a celebrity for her interviews. I was just trying to like bait people to give me guests. I was like, I need right. a guest. It worked and I got um, this comedian, Rick Glassman. Yep. I got him to do it. And he has like a pretty, like he's really respected in the comedy space. So that actually got me like, I think that's what led to Funny Marco. Well, so someone saw my interview with Rick and they commented under that video and was like, you have the same style and like sense of humor as Funny Marco. I'd never heard of Funny Marco in my life. And I was like, okay, well, if you get me in contact with Funny Marco, I'll give you $300. So I tagged, no, so then I posted a screenshot of that to my Instagram story. And I said, Funny Marco, which I didn't think he'd see it because he had 4 million followers. And I was like, that's so many followers. Mm -hmm. You're never gonna see this. I was like, at Funny Marco, if you want this girl to win $300, come on my podcast. He replied within like a minute and was like, okay. So you're telling me that you paid a really big agent in Hollywood only $300 and they were able to connect you to Lil Yachty, Tyga, Mark Cuban, and Drake? 
that actually makes no sense i don't know if she's trying to be sarcastic or she was being for real but that makes absolutely no sense all i have to say is girl bye so i saw a tweet that said that bobby is signed to the same agency as drake it's called wme but apparently she was signed after her drake interview a lot of other influential figures are signed to this agency such as i think jessica alba ben affleck and matt damon so she was signed to this agency fairly quickly and apparently after the drake interview which i guess is possible however I personally think that she she was signed way in advance but let her say what she wants to say I guess but after all of the interviews I've watched and all of the articles I've read I have come to my own conclusion that Bobby is indeed an industry plant and none of her explanations make sense on how she was able to become one of the most prominent podcasters of this year and maybe she knows that her answers make absolutely no sense but she knows that people are going to talk about it because that's going to put more money in her pocket and also the fact that she's basically profiting off the urban culture yet she claims to not know any hip-hop song she claimed to not really know any of these major artists is a little bit aggravating but while we are on this topic i want to bring up topic of white mediocrity and before you guys come with the pitchforks let me explain so let's talk about white mediocrity. I want you to listen to this part of the video with respect and openness and you may agree or you may disagree but we can chat about that in the comments. Okay but first let's define exactly what white mediocrity is. White mediocrity is a term that has been used in some discussions to refer to situations where individuals of white ethnicity, particularly in the context where they hold positions of power or privilege, are perceived as achieving success or recognition without demonstrating exceptional talent, skills, or effort. It suggests that these individuals benefit from systemic advantages or biases that may not be afforded to individuals from marginalized or underrepresented backgrounds. Okay, so let's talk about how Bobby is connected to this term. As we can see, Bobby is a white woman and her podcast has basically blew up in the span of less than a year. And she has been able to achieve this by honestly doing the bare minimum. There's not a lot of production going on with her podcast. It's very simple and it can be seen as boring and bland because the questions are just very random and they don't really have any substance to them. And I personally feel like her interviews are only interesting if the guest is interesting because Bobby is not interesting. But if you're black or from a marginalized community, you cannot be doing the bare minimum and expect to excel and get all the opportunities that Bobby has been given and I don't want to bring up Charlie D'Amelio but I'm gonna bring her up because I feel like she also fits into this discussion perfectly so you may know Charlie she's a very popular TikToker basically she blew up I think 2019 2020 when TikTok first came around all she did was just post videos of herself dancing and she's not a bad dancer but she's definitely not the best one and she doesn't even choreograph any of the dances that she was doing that made her blow up but basically just by posting dancing videos like everyone else on the platform she for some reason was able to blow up and get so much opportunities and her whole life basically changed and now she has millions of followers is dancing with I think Jennifer Lopez she was at the Super Bowl so she has been given a lot of opportunities just by dancing on TikTok and a lot of people do the exact same thing so my question essentially is what did she do to stand out from all of the other dancers or creators on TikTok because genuinely I don't really see appeal to her this is where white mediocrity comes in these girls are allowed to be mediocre and still receive all of the opportunities that they have received which is cool great for them but why do black creators have to work 10 times harder and be super top notch to just get an ounce of the success that these individuals are getting. So Dochi is a really great example of this. She's an American rapper and singer. She can dance her tail off too. She really has the whole package. Yet she's not really popular as her peers are. And of course, Charlie, Bobby, and Dochi are all in different industries. Well. Bobby and Charlie are basically in the same, but my point still applies. And for example, DJ Academics is another very popular YouTuber and podcaster, but he did not become DJ Academics overnight. He started his YouTube channel in 2015, and with hard work and dedication, he has been able to build a solid fan base and now has become a prominent figure in the hip hop culture. And I find it surprising that Drake has given Bobby an interview, but has never given DJ Academics an interview. But I wanna just reiterate that I'm not hating on Bobby or Charlie, but I just want to bring light to the fact that a lot of white people are able to get 
all these opportunities by being mediocre. Honestly, I just want my people to be able to be given the same grace to be mediocre. It's a lot of work to be the best of the best. Or if we don't want anyone mediocre in the entertainment industry, then the bar should be set as high as it is for black people as it is for white people as well. Like, I don't want to have to be the best of the best just to get all of these opportunities. Being the best of the best takes time. It's a gradual process. Beyonce wasn't Beyonce overnight. So they're given so much grace to just be mediocre just because they're white, pretty, and all that. But I guess all I can do for now is complain about it, but I just wanted to bring light to this conversation because it's something that I have been thinking about for a long time. And by bringing light to this, I think that these social media platforms hopefully can take notes and to create programs to help other influencers or creators or artists or whatever to create these programs to help emerging artists that identify as, as black indigenous or as a person of color okay so we now have concluded that miss bobby is indeed an industry plant and i'm not sure why she is continuously lying about this because it is very very obvious but i guess it's because people gravitate more towards an authentic come up story rather than hearing about all of the connections that you had that helped you blow up i just want to mention that things that typically happen so quickly are usually the weakest and don't don't stand the test of time or have a very long run. So the fact that Bobby's podcast blew up so quick, who's to say that it's not gonna fall as quick as it blew up? Whatever you're working on, whether it's a business venture, maybe your social media, don't let other people who are excelling past you, don't let that demotivate you or make you wanna quit. Keep doing what you need to do to get to the stage where you wanna be. Because I know it can be tiring and demotivating to see other people excel quicker at the thing that you're trying to accomplish but you have to remember that things that take years to build will stand the test of time versus something that happens so quickly that's not going to stand the test of time so try to be patient i know it's easier said than done but be patient and work on everything that you need to work on to get where you want to be you don't want to put all this effort into something let it blow up so quickly and then boom after two seconds it's gone so just keep working on what you're working on and don't let other people demotivate you or distract you but on that note, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below. Definitely share your opinions on this topic below. I'm very interested to see what you guys have to say about it. But anyways, thank you for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!